Hello everyone, hope you're keeping well and safe and here again back with another video and um, today our topic that we're going to be talking about is recovery and different recovery methods that we can add to our game, okay? The reason I want to talk about this is because while it's so great to see everyone being active and participating in different sessions and challenges and going on for runs and cycles and things like that, what we don't want is people getting injured now or burning out your body or overtraining and also what we don't want is that when things get back to normal that you're picking up injuries then because you're training regularly in your schedule. So basically we just want to add in some recovery tips so that you're keeping your body healthy now and performing at a high level and that when we get back to normal it's a smooth transition and you're not picking up injuries. Okay so when we talk about recovery it's basically anything and everything you can do every day before and after performance to ensure that your body is at normality. So that your body is performing at a high level all the time. And the two methods that we're gonna talk about today are foam rolling and stretching. So the stretching you do before and the stretching you do after. So they're the two topics that we will be talking about today. Okay, so before we move on to our foam rolling, I just wanna show you one quick thing on the board. So why do we add recovery into our um, lifestyle? It's because before we go out and perform, do our sessions, go out for your jog, your run, your cycle, whatever it is, if your body is at this level here of performance, after you're finished, your muscles are tired, everything's sore, you might be down here, okay? So if we don't add in our recovery methods and you have your sleep and you wake up the next morning or whatever it is, you might be back up to about here. So that's without your recovery. So that's below our optimum performance level that we want to hit, okay? If we add in our recovery methods, drink plenty of water, eat right, we can go all the way back up to here and maybe a little bit further. But the idea is to get back up to our optimum performance level. So that's the reason why we added it. Okay, so this is a foam roller. I'm sure you all have one in the house somewhere collecting cobwebs, time to break it out and use it. If you use it already, fantastic. We're just going to go through a little tutorial on how to use the foam roller correctly and where to not use it. So why do we use a foam roller? Basically what it does is it helps to relieve tension and tightness in your muscles after performance. So you can use it every morning, you can use it after you come home from training, after you come home from your run, your cycle, whatever it is, just to help you get your body back up to that optimum performance level that we talked okay, about. So when we talk about foam rolling, what we wanna do is hit the key muscle groups. So your calves, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your upper back. The areas that we want to avoid might sound funny, but your face, your neck, and your lower back. These are sensitive areas that, when foam roll, can cause a lot of damage and possibly injury. So avoid them at all costs. Also, good tip is just to avoid any sensitive areas like behind your knee, your hips, so your hip flexors and your adductors, so anywhere around your hips and any other sensitive areas that you might have in your body. Just avoid rolling them, and we'll focus on them when we're when we're stretching later on. Okay, so like we said before, these are the sensitive areas to avoid. So behind your knees and then your hips. So you have your hip flexors and your adductors to your outside. So avoid those areas when rolling. Okay, so you get a side view and a front view of every exercise. But a good tip uh, for everyone is just whenever you're rolling, just roll each area for 30 seconds to a minute. If you need to go more than that to get more of a feel on it, that's fine. Okay, so start off with calves. Just get in a good position, hands on the floor. We're using our hands for momentum to move us up and down. And we're just going up and down. Start off, you can just have one leg on the front more, or if you need more of a feel on it, you can put your other leg across and go as up. Okay, so make sure you're getting the inside as well. So turn your leg inwards and the outside too, turn your leg outwards. And then back to the middle. And then swap over, do the same again on the other side. So inside, outside, and middle. Next, moving up onto our hamstring. So again, we're avoiding the back of our knee. So we're starting just on the very bottom of our hamstring. Same again, hands on the floor, and we're up and down. Leg across the body. 
and we're getting the full length of our hamstring. Again, 30 seconds to a minute, swap over and you can do the other side then. Okay, so next move on to our glutes. So it's leg across the body. Uh, we're tilting to the side a little bit and it's just over and back. And then same on the other side. Leg on it, over and just tilting to the side and over back. Okay, moving on to the quads. So again, we're facing the floor this time. So just above the knee, leg in the air, and we're just up and down. Again, avoiding the hips at the top because we'll stretch them when we're doing stretching. Again, 30 seconds to a minute, and then swap over. Okay, moving on then to our upper back again. Avoid the lower back because you have no rib cage to protect yourself. So we go right up to the upper back. And again, avoiding our neck at the top. And we're just up and down. Make sure we have controlled breathing through all of this, of course. Of course, if you need to do your abs or your chest or your lats, you can, but today we're just working on the key muscle groups. So calves, quads, hamstrings, glutes, back. Okay, that's what we're touching on today. Okay, so that concludes the foam rolling part of the video. Now we're going to move on to stretching. So the stretching that you do beforehand, which is called dynamic, and then the stretching that you do after, which is called okay, static. What we're gonna start with is dynamic stretching, which basically means stretching on the move. Okay, so again, we're trying to hit the key muscle groups, calves, quads, glutes, hamstrings, groins, and hips. Okay, so they're all the things we'll touch on in dynamic stretching. Okay, so set off with the calves, we're just hands in the air and walking on the toes. You don't need a lot of space, you can just walk over and back. Couple times, change direction. Okay, then touch on our hamstrings. So we all know it's sweeping the floor. So it's just on the toes, but we're sweeping forward, toe in the air, bending the knee, okay? Again, we want to avoid sensitive areas, so that's behind the knee. So if we have our legs straight, that's putting stress on the sensitive area. So that's why we have our knee bent. So on the toes, toe in the air, bend in the knee. Okay, then for our groins, what we're gonna do is on the toes again, it's just opening and closing the gates. So again, body facing forward, leg up, all the way around. Okay, it's important to get your leg moving the full way. So full range of motion all the way. That's why we keep our body facing straight. And then closing them in, so out and in. Okay, then for our glutes, you know it kicks across the body, so it's on the toes, just kicking across, little bend in our leg, and over. And 
And then for our hamstrings again, kicks out in front, again keeping the bend in the knee. Okay, for the quads then, there's a couple things we can do. So you might do lunges. So again, it's just out in front, down, keeping the knees straight, not open toes, and back up. On the toes, nice powerful back up. So we'll just give it a side view of that one. So it's down. Or I might do a squat. Okay, so it's feet just wider than shoulder width. It, it move it with the hip out and then just all the way down and up. And just at the side of your left. When we talk about post performance and what to do, this is where the static suggestion comes in. So the hint is in the name, it's static. So we're not moving. So it's stationary stretches that we can do. The, you typically hold them for longer, so you might hold them from the 10 to 20 seconds. And basically what it's doing is putting the muscle in a state of relaxation and getting it ready for the recovery process. So we'll start with our calves. So you all know it. We're just in the press up position. You might go right over left to start, and we're just pushing our heel down into the ground. Again, hold for 10 or 20 seconds. And then swapping over and doing the same on the other leg. Okay, for our hamstrings then. So it might be left knee on the ground, right leg out. Again, a little bend in the knee. What we're doing is we're just hanging over it. Okay, give it a little side view of that. So again, little bend in the knee and just hang it over. And then you swap over and do the same on the other side. Okay, groins, there's a couple of things that you can do. So, if you want to do both at the same time, on the toes out in front, elbows into your, inside your knees, hands on the ground, and we're just pushing out with our elbows. Okay, or if you want to focus on them singularly, left leg on the ground, right leg out, and we're just pushing down with our hip on this side. So we're just pushing down slightly with our hip to get the feel on the groin in there. And then hold for 10 or 20 seconds, swap over, and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, glutes then, a couple of things we can do. So first one, knee out in front, and we're just sitting into it. Okay, and then swap over, do the same on the other side. So sit into it. Okay, or if you want more of a stretch, you can go, so back's on the floor, right leg over your left, and we're picking up our knee on this side and we're just bringing it towards our body. And then swap over and do the same. That's just for more of a stretch. Okay, quads in. Okay, for the quads in, what we'll do is it's just lying on our side. So we're side on. Left leg first, so you're grabbing at the back here, keeping it nice close to your body, and we're just pulling up behind our back there. Okay, and then you swap over and do the same on the other side. Okay, so to sum up. Foam rolling you can do every day in the morning, after performance, dynamic stretches are before you work, they're on the toes, they're quick, static stretches then are after, they're a bit longer and they put the muscle in a relaxed state to get ready for the recovery process. Okay, if you can add these little tips into your lifestyle before and after performance, It'll help your body prevent injuries and get back to optimum performance levels, okay? So I hope you all take this on board. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or feel free to email me. Thank you and stay safe.